After a frustrating 0-2 start to the season, including a heartbreaking loss to Indiana and a loss at home to Ohio State, Penn State looks to bounce back with a win against an unranked Maryland team this weekend. Welcome to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Austin Groff, and here with me is Hunter Pickoff and Zach Gershman to break down what went wrong last week and how Penn State can grab the win this week. First off, what do we learn about Penn State after the 38-25 defeat to the Buckeyes? Well, there's some positive things to look at here. And for one, I'm going to look at the wide receiver core of Penn State. Sean Clifford, not the most accurate quarterback, but this may be catch of the year right here. I mean, Jahan Dotson, one head snag, he basically had his hand reversed too. That's pretty impressive on his part, Zach. And not only was Jahan Dotson a beast with not one, not two, but three touchdowns, I mean, other guys stepped up too. Parker Washington, Keandre Lambert-Smith. These are two young guys, but they're nice complimentary pieces to Jahan Dotson. You can't forget that big man, of course, Pat Fryermuth, the tight end. One of the best tight ends in the country. No Noah Kane, no Journey Brown. So the run game, they're not going to be relying on it as much here. But, you know, he got a little help from his friends being Sean Clifford. He's got a nice receiving core there, and I think they're going to have to lean on that pass game a little bit more than they anticipated this year. Yeah, the freshman wide receivers, Parker Washington, Keandre Lambert, Great performance for them, great performance in a big game. This is when you're on the big stage here, not right here, but on the big stage. They really did step up. And Jahan Dotson, I do not know how he got number two on SportsCenter's top 10 because that's a number one play of the year, of 2020 in any sport. Great performance there. But on the defensive side, we want to put some positives. There weren't many on the defensive side, except right here, bam. Justin Fields on the ground, kissing the dirt right there. Really, the Penn State linebacker you, no doubt about it. There was a lot of questions as to what it would be like without Micah Parsons. This past game, you did suffer a little bit in the first half without Jesse Lucchetta. Just shows what type of piece he is on the defensive side of it. But Ellis Brooks, 11 tackles. Jesse Lucchetta, 8 tackles in only the second half. This is a scary linebacking group. And what they need to do, Brent Pry needs to put him in more blitz packages so we have hits like that. Yeah, I don't think they did a good enough job being Penn State getting the Justin Fields at all. And like you said, night and day when Jesse Lucchetta was in the game. Not only is he a great player, he's a great leader too. And he galvanized that team. And that's why Penn State was able to claw their way back in that second half of the game. Despite the tough loss, Penn State did show signs of improvement following their sloppy upset loss against Indiana. However, Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields had a field day throwing the ball against the Nindy Lions. How was the Buckeyes' explosive offense able to expose the weaknesses in Penn State's defense? Yeah, Justin Fields pretty much just picked apart this defense right here. You're going to see here, this is probably one of the best throws. He could not make this throw last year. Right on the money to Chris Olave, the wide receiver for Ohio State. This is great coverage by Joey Porter, don't get me wrong. But like we just alluded to, Zach, you have to get to the quarterback if you're Penn State because their secondary relies on that pass rush. Their guys in the back end of it, they're good, but they're not great yet. They're still unproven. And while they're able to take away Justin Fields' running ability, he killed them with their arm. Kimbo sliced that defense, and as a result, uh, they weren't able to really defend them very well. Yeah, the Penn State's defensive front was quiet for a lot of this game. You have guys like Shaka Tony, Jason Owe. I don't even know if his name was mentioned. Antonio Shelton did, did get a sack that in that in the game, but still, the defensive line really did struggle and they did not make much happen. You can't you can't fault Joey Porter Jr. right there. That was great coverage, and that's a ball that only special quarterbacks are able to hit. There were a lot of weaknesses. We mentioned Jesse Lucchetta not being on the field. That's a huge part of it, but the defensive line also needs to step up. After starting 0-2 for the first time since 2012, Penn State looks to get back on track as Maryland comes into town on Saturday. What's the biggest adjustment Penn State needs to make before their game against the Terrapins? Oh, they need to shore up that offensive line. Oh my God, I could walk right through that, defense, that offensive line there. You see here, Sean Clifford did not have much time in the pocket. Right away gets put down. He was trying to do a little bit too much. Don't get me wrong. Right here, you try having the read option. But Will Fries is a deer in headlights. I don't know what he's trying to look for there. But that whole Buckeyes defense swarmed Sean Clifford for the entire game for the most part. Had 18 rush attempts, only five yards. That's nothing. That's nothing, especially for a running quarterback. And if we want to do these read options, Micah Parsons was live tweeting about it during the game saying, you got to do these read, is this how it's going to be, these read options? It can't be like that. So Penn State's got to clean up the offensive line. They got to clean up the read options. It can't be the same play. It's very predictable offense right now. 
We have Kirk Soraka as a new offensive coordinator. There's been nothing special about this offense. They really got to clean it up. Sean Clifford cannot be sacked five times, and he can't have 18 rush attempts for five yards. Yeah, I think the problem, too, is James Franklin's really stuck with the shotgun mentality read option. Kirk Soraka, he ran a lot of different stuff in this, so I think they got to open up that playbook a little more. It may be too little too late because all that preparation they did in the off seasons, it's hard to kind of flip scripts like that. But like you said, Zach, that offensive line was like a New York subway turnstile. I mean, everyone was allowed to get through at that point. But Sean Clifford, I'm going to look at him. He played pretty well. But look, you can't be staring down your first reads. You got to play quarterback for once and actually, you know, read through your progressions like we saw Justin Fields do. He holds on to the ball too long. He's not the most accurate throw. doesn't put the ball in the right place as he should be. As a Penn, if you're a Penn State fan, you got to expect more from him. He has not looked like he's taking that jump. He's got natural talent. He does, but you got to expect more from him as the season progresses. You saw in that first clip, you saw Sean Clifford looking straight down the field and not, and not turning anywhere around. You got three valuable candidates at wide receiver there. We talked about Parker Washington, Jahan Dotson. You don't just forget about a guy like that. And Pat Fryermuth. This offense, they have all the weapons. The offensive line needs to hold up. They got to give Sean an extra second or two so he could look at all the options there. And there you have it. Thank you, Zach and Hunter, for your great analysis of this film breakdown. We'll see if the Nittany Lions can get back on track the rest of this season. That wraps it up here on Penn State Sports Night for Hunter Pickoff and Zach Gershman. I'm Austin Groff. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic night. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.